Hey everyone, today we're gonna to do an unboxing and check out this Craftsman generator. This is a 10,500 starting, 7,000 constant electric start generator. I picked this one up today, so let's get started. This is specifically Craftsman part number 1028245. Got our quick start instructions, our comprehensive manual. I'll have to assemble the wheels and handle. Generators are generally packed thin. I do find this unit, however, to be well packaged. There was no damage to this unit. They also want to remind you that these little plastic wheels are not for highway use. What needed to be assembled was pretty straightforward. Done in a number of minutes with basic tools. This is the feet. The negative side of the battery is tucked away down here. I brought it onto level ground for a moment. In accordance with the manual, it says that the generator comes preloaded with 10W30. Wipe the dipstick, put it back in. We'll see what we got. We're sitting between low and high. So it's not without oil. You probably top off a little bit, but they do have factory oil in here. So I'm gonna add some 10W30. We're gonna try this out. I wanna point out a first interesting observation I noticed that there's no provision that came with this generator for a DC trickle charger for the battery. So if you wanted to plug in just a low current DC charger to keep that battery topped off as it sat here for months not being used, you can't do so. I imagine that the generator itself charges the battery, top it off while the device is running. There's nothing here to actually do it when it's sitting. So I'd have to buy like a small trickle charger to plug this thing into the wall when it's sitting in the garage. I thought that was kind of cheap, so I'm going to point that out. Also point out that this one is equipped with a carbon monoxide detector that automatically shuts off the unit if it does detect carbon monoxide accumulating around the generator. This is not critically important in this situation. This generator will be outside. I do think it's a pretty cool feature. If you're running them in or near an enclosed environment, very important, could save a life. So that's nice. I'm going to go through the front panel real quick, and this is on purpose. Uh, very simple, it's what we're looking for. And this is obviously, again, uh, 10,000 to 7,000 constant. We have the choke, and that's for just for cold start until it warms up, and that's fine. This is the engine on and off switch for the ignition, shut down the engine. This is, I believe, a momentary switch for the starter. I don't wanna hit that right now. That's just to get the engine going. And we have uh, 120 volt, 20 amp provisions we're not gonna be using those for this generator because it's connected to a transfer switch. And over here, we can see the receptacle that we're going to be using. It's like a Hubble connector, hospital type connector. And that is a 30 amp locking Hubble connector. And that will be going to the transfer switch to the basement. And this is a reset for that locking outlet right there. And that's it, that's all there is, all the controls. Nothing else, no more gimmicks. Nothing to break, simple as possible. Furthermore, in the event of an electric start failure, there is a pull start that can be used to get it going. Uh, the fuel does have a shutoff switch to the tank right here. Speaking of the tank, this is a large tank. I think it's like four or five gallon tank. This is very nice. Look at the cap. No filter in the tank. I'll point that out. So it's not one of those that has the mesh net right under here. Interesting vapor line right there. It is cool that they have the fuel gauge though. I did have on my Westinghouse video, they advertised the fuel gauge on the box and in the advertisement. They had it in the manual, but alas, my tank had no fuel gauge, just a sticker right here. So these, these are very useful. And you can see what you're doing, what you need to do if you need to go out and get more gas without having to open the tank itself while it's running and check it out. So that's a nice addition. So I'm gonna add a little more oil, 5W30. As I mentioned before, this generator comes with nothing extra. Be prepared to purchase a funnel, preferably one of these longer ones that can access that oil plug right there. Be sure to add in very small amounts if you're topping it off like I am because it's easier to add than it is to take out of these things. I got five gallons of gas here. That's gonna be two ounces of stabilizer. Give the can a shake and fill her up. Put about half that five gallon can in the gauge has barely moved. So this takes quite a bit of fuel. Make sure the fuel valve is set to on. Stop, pull the choke. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. It's kind of hot out today, but we'll see. I'm gonna set the engine switch to on and we're gonna do the inaugural run with the electric start. So here we go. Maybe too much choke.
they can have attached a space heater. I want to see how much it bumps when I shut off the heater and turn it back on. What I'd like to do is just try out the pull starter right quick, see how that works. I can't do it with the camera, but I'm going to try it out, make sure everything is running okay. And then I'm going to let it cool down for a bit. Ran it now for the second half an hour. Everything is running just fine. No complaints. Uh, the smell of paint and whatnot for the first heating up is finally gone. So I just want to get a couple more hours in, see how everything is running on the initial break-in. We're going to change the oil, and then we're going to look at the oil when we drain it into a filter, see what we got in there. This has been over five and a half hours of break-in time. We're going to drain the oil, we're going to take a look at it, and then we're going to put fresh oil in it. Broke the tension with the 12 millimeter socket. It's got a Tupperware container with a couple coffee filters down here. I'm going to open this up, slowly let that oil drain, it's still nice and hot, and direct it hopefully over the coffee filter. I don't see what matter we get during this break-in. Before I open this up all the way, I want to get a piece of paper in front of this so it doesn't all pour out by the wheel here. Channeling it with a paper funnel. Well, we'll still see what collects in the filter. Let this drain out. No problem at all. Screw and washer has been pulled out of the oil, all cleaned up. There is all sorts of interesting stuff in this oil we're going to look at in a bit. Look at all, I don't think the camera picks it up like this, but just a ton of material from the break in. Oil plugs all buttoned up. Let's see if this captures it. Looks like metallic paint. Look at that. Cool is that? None of this ultra fine stuff appears to be magnetic. It's not being picked up on the magnet at all. Nothing. It has no effect. So it could very well be aluminum. And this is ultra fine. This has already been through the filter. So this is expected break-in oil. So and there's no problem here. I was just curious. I picked up this battery maintainer at Harbor Freight. The main reason I chose this one has the quick disconnects that I have for my motorcycle. So we could permanently mount this to the generator, be able to quick disconnect this. It's also fused. I'm going to install this portion now. The red cable is all but inaccessible, so the battery has to be removed, which means removing the securing bolt that goes across and the ground cable to bring it forward to gain access to the positive. The new connector is installed. I'll cable tie everything together. We can push the battery back in now. What we're left on the side of the generator is a 7.5 amp inline fuse and a plug for the trickle charger. We can see as I plug it in, it's going to green, going into a monitored charge battery, it's uh, trickle charging, so everything's working fine. So we're going to finish up the video on this generator by going through the procedures of operating this on the house transfer switch in the event of a power outage. Disconnecting from the trickle charger to the house. Positioning it within close proximity to this box, which we've installed to the basement, right here to the generator. I have a 10 gauge extension cord to minimize any losses. This will plug into the 30 amp connector on the generator. Get some choke. Got the engine switch on. Give it a minute to heat up. After waiting a minute, I come downstairs to the transfer switch. Everything is set for line right now. The whole house is running on generator, except for the water heater. I'm not moving it over for this demonstration. Now that's it, the whole house. You can, I think you just barely heard the generator just for a second. I saw the light flicker. And yeah, the light flickered a bit. If we look down here, right now the house is it's definitely not consuming a lot of wattage. I think we're at like 250, 300 watts right now. We just don't have a lot of business going on here yeah. on this side. Like there's a couple, there's some wattage here on this side, some on that side. But yeah, we're not just not consuming a lot right now. And that's it. So obviously the less stuff used less gasoline you'd have to keep adding to the generator right so you still right. wouldn't want to run this house lights running and Mine's and whatever you know that's it and now i'm just going to bring this this one's not being used so i'm just going to bring this back over to line side okay 
Light flicker. Yeah, so light flicker. Okay. And now we're back on on mains power. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the 10,000 watt, 7,000 watt Craftsman generator and transfer switch implementation. Hit that like button below, helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?